the strategy of um, goal question metric. Um, and I feel like some it's it's often hard to get get all three of them. Sometimes it's only two. Um, and I think that kind of makes it then difficult to figure out, well, if I only have if I can only have two of those items, what am I just if I am I justifying my hospital? Am I justifying open source in general? I, I don't know. Yeah, and you know, getting back to your comment about you know a company versus versus community, that's a really, I think, a really hard question, and I think it's something that a lot of us have been, you know, at one time or another in our careers, kind of torn between. Um, the way, <laughs> the way I've started handling a lot of this is that you know when you're when you're talking to executives and then you're justifying the work and you're getting budget for things and you're um, you know putting together the business case. Um, I always talk about how do you tie that back to strategy? How do you tie that back to objectives? How do you tie that back to being successful for your company? Um, because I know that once we get um, permission to do the stuff within these open source projects, there will be downtime, right, for these upstream developers. And then they can work on things like, you know, contributing back to the community and like, you know, documentation or, you know, answering questions and, and things like that. So there's, there's just all of this stuff that we can do um, once we actually get the business case to um, have people assigned to do it. So I know that the, the community work, I can be frankly a little bit more sneaky about that. And, um, you know, in, while they're waiting for a PR to merge, they can, they can do something else that helps the community. And so I, I kind of look at those as, as two, two sort of separate activities, because if you try to justify the work, kind of the, what in the Kubernetes community we call the, you know, chop wood, carry water, activities um it sounds like charity to executives and they, they tend not to like that when it comes to you know assigning employees to do things so i'm really really careful not to pitch it that way but knowing that i'll still be able to do some of that i know we didn't i know we probably didn't give you the answer that you wanted jan but is this do you feel like you've got kind of a kind of an answer to this question, or at least you have a little more of a perspective on it? Yeah, absolutely. I know this was a hard question to answer. I think it's so, <laughs> I, I appreciate hearing everyone's perspective, and I feel like um, I feel like this is always on the back of my mind or on leadership's mind, right? And so, um, as people start to come across it, feel free to. Um, bring it back up and let us know if you have any new stories or anything else to share because I think um, yeah it's it's an ongoing topic for sure cool thank you I do I do think this conversation ties in nicely with something that's a little bit later on the agenda so um do we want to jump around in the agenda and talk about that? Yeah, which, certainly. Which topic? Yeah. It was around the, actually, right there, the ASPO book chapter. Oh, OK. Right there. So cool. Yep. So I'll start. I can kind of segue into this. Um, so the comments that you see here, we did a chaos con in Brussels. And one of the things we did was we asked, um, we were just asking participants kind of questions around this, like, what are things that uh, chaos should be working on, what are challenges that you're facing with respect to, to metrics. So Chan, I think the questions that you're asking are really quite relevant to what we were talking about in ChaosCon. And so I was trying to, you can actually click on that ChaosCon EU link right there, Don. And this will take you just to a, an overall blog post that we're putting together for a summary. Um, and you'll see if you scroll down just a little bit on, you'll just see the two questions that we asked. So right there at the bottom of page one, I should put page numbers on here. Um, what challenges exist for using metrics within your OSPO community? And then if you keep scrolling down, you can just see what should the chaos project be working on in the future. So um, what this is, is there's two kind of two things that were pulled out. Those are those paragraphs right there. And then the full set of comments from folks are down below. Um, so 
Chan, to, to your point, if you go back to the minutes done, these were the these two paragraphs here were kind of the some of the high level things that were drawn out of that. And so the first one I don't think is is really the one that maybe is applicable here. It's really kind of the second one, which is how to communicate better, like how to help tell the story better, which I think a lot of people seem to be struggling with. Um, and I, I think that story can be one, even with developers, you know, within your organization Two, it can certainly be with, um, you know, leadership or executive. And so I, I might, one of my proposals, at least in the book chapter, is that we could talk about kind of effective ways to communicate about using metrics and metrics models. And maybe a good starting point is around what Don was talking about with like put strategy first. You know, let's start there and talk about how our engagement with open source um, help strategy. And at least this is what I was hearing from you, Don. And then and then from there, the open source work, like the community work can 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 go however it needs to go if the tie back to strategy um, can be established first. If that's what you were saying, that's kind of what I heard, Don. That like, however the however you need to engage with open source at that point, fine. Do whatever you need to do, as long as it's tying back to in, improving strategy uh, within the organization. And I'm wondering if that's something we could bring forward in the book chapter. I really like that idea. I mean, I think, yeah. well, as you know, I think the tie back to strategy is is really important, and I think it does help. Osbo's frame some of those discussions. So I think I think weaving that into into the book chapter would be would be pretty good. Okay, great. Um, I'm curious if other people have thoughts because I was thinking about this book chapter. Like I, I okay, got a thumbs up too from Chan. So I like that because um, it seems like these, at least in the conversations we were having at Chaos Con and and here as well it's, it's these types of issues it's not like what is the metric that i need or what is the metric model that i need uh, it's it's maybe some of these other types of things the for what it's worth too while we're here all right cool i can i can kind of start setting that up in the book chapter for what it's worth too um the top one there the consistent use of metrics within an organization and community you can give that a quick read but generally i think the the concern that a lot of people were having is that within large organizations, the way that metrics and metrics models are understood throughout an organization or a big community varies widely. And so um, in one portion of an organization, the way that you would talk about, say, value, like this case, is quite different than the way somebody else would. And that variability is hard to overcome sometimes. So we don't have a consistent way of talking about Metrics, metrics, models, health, this kind of this whole thing. And that variability uh, creates challenges for people. And so maybe part of the book chapter two could also kind of focus on how to lower those barriers um, to the inconsistencies in, in language that you might find across an organization or across a community or organizations. I think Sophia had said it in, in thinking about, well, who are your stakeholders? Um, and what is it that they want they want and what what do they want to hear and how do they want to hear it? And so um, I there's there's um, stakeholders that we have that are just quantitative, only want to see the data, only want to see the graphs. And then there's our qualitative folks who who really want to hear the stories and hear what um, impact there is. And so I think that that question of like who who are your stakeholders could be a um, section under that, I guess. Yeah, I think that's super important. I feel like the, I always have, there's so many caveats to everything, but I feel like one thing that I've really struggled with, with various teams or perspective or stakeholders is that there's sometimes there's a, a pressure to simplify. And I always really struggle with that. So I like to be hyper specific when I show data, especially when it can mean different things if you don't describe it appropriately. Um, and so I guess this is sort of a, a just a general challenge. And 
especially this need to sort of tailor it to your audience. But I have been found myself in a position sometimes to just like, give me one number. And I'm like, well, there's six of them <laughs> and they mean slightly different things. So I like have, I don't know, it's just like, it's been challenging sometimes depending on who you're working with. And um, I have, I don't know, I just feel like in some cases it does lead to sort of uncomfortable conversations around how to simplify things that are inherently complex. Um, so it's it's just more reiterating that this is can be challenging, <laughs> um, and it's I, I don't know if we can really make it easy in the context of a book. I think it's mostly just calling out explicitly ways that we can help people approach it. But I think it's always going to be inherently difficult. Um, I don't know if any of you have been involved in writing briefs for the government, but I've been explicitly told they don't understand any of these words that you're saying. So <laughs> how, how do you how do you contextualize this? And I was like, well, that's going to make it less accurate because I'm not going to be as explicit. And that was an incredibly difficult thing for me to be comfortable with. <laughs> but it's, again, it's just like, who are you speaking with? And do they know the words that you're saying? Do they know what they mean? Maybe, maybe not. Um, and so I think that I, I struggle with the simplification and losing accuracy in what you're saying. Um, so that's just me personally as an analyst problem, but I have to imagine that others have potentially faced that as well. The struggles of a data scientist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think what you said kind of early in that um, discussion, I think is really important, which is um, helping people helping people think through the context of what they're trying to do and think through the problem. And, um, you know, we, we work in a space where there are, there are no right answers for every situation, right? All we can do is help people, help people think of ways that they can possibly contextualize some of this and, and put it into something that's gonna work for, for their particular organization or situation. Anything else on this topic, Matt? Do you feel like you got what you needed out of that? Yeah, this is good. I'm not gonna. Me personally won't know um, what that those first helping steps could be. So I I would need. I mean, if we could talk about it, maybe even just a few of those here. You know, I agree with you that we're we're not gonna just in a book chapter say here are the seven steps to make this super simple and it'll guaranteed work, um, but maybe if there were even just a few steps that could help folks within an organization do this contextualization, that would that would be really helpful for me. And I know that it would probably be helpful for folks reading such a chapter. Do you wanna have that conversation here? Or is that something you wanted to do offline with? If, if people have like quick thoughts on it, that would be cool. And I can put those quick thoughts into a document and then we can speak to that document in maybe a couple of weeks. And if you don't, that's okay too. I can put a structure out and then we can, you know, just kind of use that as a starter later. I feel like we kind of said it, just not as succinctly in an order. Uh, someone brought up the goal question metric and I apologize okay. if I forget who said that, but I feel like it's that preceded by who are you talking to and what do they care about? And so like with both of those things, you can probably get most of what you need because then you know who your people are. Hopefully you know what their goals are and the questions they have answered. And then you have numbers against those questions. So the questions will give you the context and ideally what this is actually trying to answer against their goals. So all those things combined that should give you enough context to communicate this, but you really have to know the people first and then apply that to every persona, team or level that you're working with. I guess that's the oversimplified view, but. No, I would agree with that. I mean, I think a lot of it boils down to the question, you know, what are you, what are you trying to accomplish with your work in open source? Um, and then, like you said, I think the, it's also important to think about who the stakeholders are and how they, how they interact. Okay, this is helpful. I mean, honestly, if you, I can, like I said, I'll write that up and we can talk about it in a couple of weeks, but 
for that first one. And then even just scrolling down a little bit, Don, to that second one, I have your comment about tying to strategy, which we talked about earlier, which these might be good, good points of entry to help people um, in OSPOs kind of orient themselves around these two problems or challenges that they're facing. And Greg, are you thinking for this book that you would, the book chapter, like there would be the kind of case studies uh, or sure. examples of people applying this? Yeah, so I think the book chapters are meant to help folks in OSPOs in a variety of different situations that they're in, with ours being focused particularly around metrics and health kind of related things. And so, I mean, in the chapter, we could could potentially have case studies. Um, so I, so I'm not entirely sure <laughs> to your, to your proposed um, way forward, Alyssa. Basically, I think what I would do is um, Anna had suggested that we could kind of frame this out just a little bit, and then there's uh, um, there are some GitHub issues where this can be posted around the book chapter, where feedback can be solicited. I think there's also a mail list or a discussion board as well. Y'all may know. Some, there's there's two ways that these ideas can begin to be circulated. So we can obviously talk about them here, um, but then I can, once we kind of, once it leaves here, I think we can post them into those two other areas to solicit wider feedback. Okay, cool. I think uh, we have, I think we have next steps. So maybe we'll back up on the agenda. And so the next thing on the agenda was actually the metrics model review. Me again. Um, yeah, so Matt, you know what? I'm gonna unshare and let you share because I think okay. that'll be easier. Sure. Especially as you walk through yep. some of these. All right, so, um, okay. So just as a quick recap, I think we've talked a little bit about metrics models here. These are kind of, you know, we're down into some of the details. And so um, within the chaos project, there are maybe a collection of about 75 individual metrics and metrics models are ways to kind of bring those metrics together in meaningful ways around a particular topic. Um, and so what, I, what I'd like to talk through just a little bit here is uh, metrics models that you all may find helpful within your OSPO. Um, and then the way that it could work is that you all can just brainstorm here or kind of throw out ideas with respect to metrics models, like what you would like to see. And I have some examples down below. Um, and then if there's an existing metric or there's a, a metric that doesn't exist or a particular metric model, we can develop them within the chaos project. That's not the responsibility <clears throat> of this group. So, so if you, if you mention something, um, don't be hesitant because you're concerned that you might have to be the one that does the development of it. So if you if you want something, just you know go ahead and and ask because um, we can we have processes within the chaos project that can not only kind of develop these metrics models but the the necessary metrics behind them as well. And so the there's one here which is the um, the starter model, which is one that Don had put together. Um, and it's now published on the chaos site. Um, and these are the four metrics, just I think we've talked about this before, but these are the four metrics that help define this metrics model. And so Don, if you just could give like a really brief overview again of kind of what the focus of this was uh, for you and what the hope was, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So so these are the four metrics that that I use across all of the projects within VMware that have enough enough data to gather these in a, in a meaningful way um, because what I wanted projects to have was just kind of a really basic starter way of looking at, at the health of their project and so these these metrics are all very different because I wanted to kind of capture what I thought were key elements of of um, project health so you know are you responding quickly to um, pull requests are you actually close? So change request is like a pull request or a merge request on GitLab. So the, are you actually closing about as many as you get in any given month? Um, so you're not getting this gigantic backlog of pull requests because you're not merging or closing things. Do you have enough people on the project for it to be healthy? 
And then are you actually, um, you know, making enough releases that you know, people are getting security fixes and features and bug fixes in a, in a timely manner? So these, like I said, these are all four very different metrics. But my, my idea is even, even within VMware, the idea is that they can use this as a starting point. And then what I encourage projects to do, especially if they're bigger projects, you know, if they have community managers, maybe they gather lots of other metrics. Um, you know, maybe they look at some other things within their project, but my hope behind doing this as a metrics model was that other OSPOs can learn from it and they can take, you know, these four as a starting point because we get a lot of questions about, you know, where do I start measuring project health? Because that's, it's overwhelming, right? There are like a million metrics you could pick. Which ones, which ones do you pick? So I, I picked four to help people get started with the idea that then they can build on that and pick some others that are maybe more important to them as an organization. Any questions on that? Cool. No, that's that's super helpful. Thank you, Don. Um, I have two of these open. So, you know, I, I even think from the discussion we were having earlier today, um, I'm going to bring these down as well. Um, one of the things that came from ChaosCon as well was a collection of um, five metrics models that could be brought together to do five different things. So perhaps one of those metrics models is what Don had pointed out, right? Just kind of getting people located to, to really start asking questions about health of the projects they care about. So then the question that I would pose to all of you is, are there other metrics models that might be valuable to you within your OSPO that could maybe help in part of that communicating with others, um, part, of, you know, part of creating consistency even across OSPOs? Um, and I put a couple samples in here. So I'll, I'll and I don't mean to, to like you, you don't need to just pick one of these, but if there's one that you would like that's not on this list, um, feel free. So I'll I'll stop for a second and see if folks have have thoughts. Sorry, I don't have the, the oh the raise hand. Um, I I like the this question, um, the participation one. How to measure the value of participation in a project? Uh, and does this, up? Alyssa, does this tie back in you, your conversations earlier, kind of around the discussions up here? A value, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and again, I, I mean, I am cautious of the when we start talking about like um, kind of the philanthropic value of participation in a project, and rather than the like strategic and 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 business value of participation what's, in the project. What's, what's your focus that you would have an interest in? Um, I would look I would love to see uh, or more around it's funny because I'm doing a lot with corporate philanthropies right now, but that all that said, I feel like the, the need is around like the strategic business value. Thank you, because I, I probably couldn't spell philanthropic right now. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what might be not to like think about the model itself, but I always feel like something like participation is also not really well defined. Mm -hmm. um, and so in a metrics model like that, I would love to see it explore different modes of participation um, in terms of how that can go into a discussion of value or impact. Um, so in the comment of philanthropy, but there's also uh, like so many ways that you can interact with a project. I really like Don's example of looking at working on specific technical issues that are directly in line with say what your product does versus working on sort of the broader issues in the project that keep the project functioning and healthy. Um, and that potentially could even be a subset of like not just like technical participation. There's multiple ways that you can participate that way, or if you're doing more community management pieces or event logistics and the other number of things that you could do. I mean, we have 
already a metric that kind of enumerates all the various ways that you can contribute and participate. So it might be a nice to incorporate that um, as part of this discussion. They did put it as just its own for the time being. I mean, maybe this is something that can merge here with value. Well, I see it as like a the orthogonal view. <laughs> you wanna expand all the ways you can look at it, but maybe that's just my my brain. Like you, you see it more as part of this, is that right? Well, I think it could be part of a number of these things. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's more that it gives gives that comment more context. When we say participate, gotcha. we're looking at the impact of contributing code versus time versus money versus. Gotcha. Versus not contributing at all. I find that very interesting angle to look at. Which one did you say? The measure of cost of non-participation. Oh. Happens the same or yeah, similar as, as when you... Hmm. No, go ahead, Igor. Oh, it's just comparing it to, to quality. Very, very many times when you deal with quality, uh, you turn the view around and you tell them how much is the cost of non-quality instead of the cost of quality. So this is, again, similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like some of these participate metrics um, feel like they belong together in one metric model where you could look at the various aspects of participation. So okay. you could look at the impact of non-participation, you could look at the value of participation, you could look at what so Sophia was talking about um, more around kind of participation in general. Because if we're thinking about this from a metrics model perspective, so we've got, I have some starter project health metrics. So you could kind of lump that into sort of a general, general health. Um, and then you can look at participation metrics. Um, the other, the other one that I think is particularly important and something I think a lot about is the, the business risk. So I was I just about whole... to say that, Don. <laughs> awesome. With, but, All right, you go yeah. ahead. Why don't you talk about no, it? No, no, no. I, I, and it's just, it's just from the legal side, uh, my, um, the way I think. And I just, I mean, I, I don't know how. I wouldn't know how to do it. Um, but it's, it is, I find it interesting. Like, how would we, how would we measure that? Sophia. Uh, you know? <laughs> Sean is calling me up to start yeah, talking about this in the risk working group. Um, just because as a number of different risk metrics that we've discussed, we're now thinking, how would we surface this into a metrics model in a way that's executable and not overly comprehensive? Because what we've struggled with is sort of how do you deal with sort of, you can think about all these various metrics and how they apply to risk. And then how do you factor in the dependency chain? Cause all of that can be applied. And so we've been thinking about ways to sort of narrow that into, I, I really like Don's approach to just keep it simple. Cause I feel like if you give someone 20 metrics like that's not actually helpful. <laughs> so I think that's sort of what we've been thinking about on the risk working group is what are the, the most important things and there's always like the extra stuff you can do, but if we were trying to narrow that. Um, but I, I agree uh, with that pursuit as we have already been thinking about it. Because I feel like you could also um, somehow, you know, tie it back to those financial stakeholders, um, you know, kind of like, I don't know, somehow demonstrate. Because <laughs> um, they're always interested in numbers, right? So I'm just trying to, I'm thinking aloud here and I apologize. Um, I'm just jumping all over, but. Licensing risk and dependency yeah. risk are the two big ones that have come up over and over again. Mary, yeah. Sophia, and Renisha. What was the other one? Licensing risk and what? Of dependencies. It is difficult to, to associate the money piece, but I feel like that is always part of a risk conversation. I, I would agree with that. Um, I think what we, I don't know, just anecdotes, we've always thought about the what would happen if we didn't do this <laughs> scenario, which is sort of like, well, if we use the wrong license and we're sued, like that's pretty bad. 
and but you can't necessarily even quantify what that amount would be. Uh, it can just you'll know it's bad, but how much bad? I don't know. It's just not <laughs> correct English, but real bad, super bad. Yeah, and the other the other piece that I think of as well when it comes to risk is um, governance and community risk. So you know the idea that you know a project is governed by a little tiny startup and they go out of business and what happens to the project, or you know the the project even like big projects that all of the contributors work for one big company and they decide to de-emphasize that that project and now all of a sudden there's nobody left to to work on it. And so how do you think of those types of like governance and community things as a part of risk as well? Um, those are also super hard to measure. So I I get that, but. <laughs> it's one of the it's one of the conversations I think people should have. I feel like it's worth mentioning just not to make this a risk meeting. Yeah. Um, but we've also somewhat opted to not address security mm -hmm. um, in the sense that there are many ways that you can sort of approach the security posture and and acknowledging that that is a risk component, but we there's sort of the conversation in the risk working group that sometimes the focus on security kind of can overcome the other issues that Don say brought up around say could the community aspects and the government aspects governance aspects and things that are also valid to consider as part of risk so knowing that there's now a risk working group also somewhat happening in the open SSF group that is heavily focused on security um, as a way to be more collaborative with our approaches, we've been focusing on the non-security aspects. So yeah. I just want to mention that just because it's, as you can always kind of expand the risk conversation. So that's one way we've tried to, to focus on what we, what we want to measure in this context. But for this group, I feel like we probably would also have to include security, but, or maybe a point or two. These are the things you should consider for security as, as sort of a like follow on. We I would have... think a, I would almost be inclined not to put security under risk, but to make it a separate metrics model um, or just Easily. tie it back to some of the things that already exist. So I, I run the um, open SSF uh, security scorecard all the time on projects, um, you know, because it gives me a list of the vulnerabilities that they haven't patched. I, I can see, you know, like, I don't know, lots of stuff about a, about a project. So there, there are definitely some security metrics that we could do that might be that aren't they're related to risk, but I feel like security is important enough that maybe it's a separate model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we do, yeah, like Sophia said, we refer to the open SSF when we're in the risk working group. Some of the chaos tools incorporate the scorecard as well now. Okay, well, I, this is a really helpful conversation. I think there's perhaps three metrics models that are starting to be identified here, which again, I think we can bring these back to the group here in a couple of weeks. I, one is already developed and published, um, but at least a couple bring them back. So, um, so thanks, thanks for that. I really like this conversation. Just wanted to plus one minute. Cool, thank you. Oops, I'm talking on mute. Yes, this is a really interesting conversation. Uh, we have four more minutes. So Matt, maybe you can just keep sharing and uh, scroll down a little bit. So I think there's only one more thing on the agenda, which I'm gonna guess that you probably added anyways. So maybe we can talk about ChaosCon. I did. I just wanted to point out to folks on this call that there is ChaosCon. It opens for Summit North America. I should have put the date in here, but I can just click this and tell you the date. May 9th, I believe. 9th, and it's in the afternoon. Um, and we will, and that's not correct, we will actually be live streaming it uh, via the Linux Foundation platform, um, but it's also in person. The schedule is here, so thanks to Sophia and to Emma who are going to be leading a couple discussions. So what we're going to be doing at the session is kind of like what we did in Brussels, where um, the keynotes one and keynotes two will kind of um, present around these questions and leave folks uh, kind of with a task to talk about these uh, questions in smaller groups. Sophia, you can obviously modify your question a little bit here. <laughs> so. Um, 
And so it's just, it's great because it, it kind of helps us capture ideas and things to kind of focus on over the course of the next year. And then there's going to be a keynote also by Sean and either Daniel or Georg uh, from Baturgia about software, um, Augur and Grimoire Lab updates as well. So I just wanted to put that in front of people. Awesome. Thank you. Any questions about ChaosCon? No, I also just want our our uh, panel discussion for Open Source North America also got um, accepted. Yeah. Yes, yes. So um, I just came back from uh, vacation, but I will I will follow up so that we can coordinate with, on that. Yeah, but, and, um, yeah. Oh, and I was just going to reiterate that that uh, that panel is on the topic of OSPOs and metrics, so it's yeah. uh, super super relevant to this this group. And the questions that came up here are probably ones that we hopefully can bring to a larger audience. Yeah, exactly. I did awesome. wonder on that if if you all would want to like do a sample of the panel here, it like as we get closer to OSSNA, just like a sample talk or a teaser, you know, just a thought, like a teaser. Yeah, yeah. like. You know. <laughs> Or just you sure. know, kind of like orient yourselves. Maybe if you have slides, or almost like practice too. We'll try sure. Run. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm up for whatever makes sense. I was gonna say I love it as a, a forum to say, are these the most like feedback on the questions that we focus on? Like, I think mm -hmm. we generally have an idea of what we could probably do. Which I say that having we haven't actually had any conversations about it, but I would love yeah. to bring that back to this group. <laughs> yeah, this would be the group. yeah for sure. Okay, well, I wanted to just thank everybody for, for coming to the meeting. I would like to uh, stress that, you know, the agenda is not necessarily driven by me and Matt. Anyone can add items to the agenda. So if there's anything you want to talk to this group about related to OSPOs, metrics, um, you know, kind of the health of your open source efforts in general, please do feel free to add stuff to the um, agenda for, for the next meeting, for future meetings, because we, we'd love to have your uh, more participation. So with that, uh, we're out of time. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thank Have you. a great day, all. Bye. Bye.